Hi guys, this is Sam, and welcome to Inglogic. In today's advanced vocabulary and listening video, we're going to talk about celiac disease, which is an intolerance to gluten, and how easy or difficult it is to be a celiac in London. I'll tell you all about my inner direct experience with it, and after that we'll dissect a couple of words related to the topic. And now please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. First of all, I am not a celiac myself, my brother is, and all the information I've garnered about this topic is related to living with my brother and to his visit here to London in July. An important disclaimer is that I am not a doctor and this is not a medical video. I know very little about the ins and outs and the technical elements of the disease myself, so I can literally give you two or three pieces of medical information on it. First things first, what is celiac disease? If you are a celiac, you are intolerant to gluten, which is a protein found in certain grains, mainly wheat, barley and rye. Celiac disease is an autoimmune disorder whereby your own immune system attacks your body and tissues as a reaction to gluten. When your body is exposed to gluten, it basically sees it as an enemy, as a virus, and it attacks it to try and eradicate it. The part of your body that suffers the most is your small bowel or small intestine, more specifically your villi. Villi is the plural of villus. Villi are finger-like protuberances in your intestine responsible for the absorption of nutrients. When your body attacks them, it shortens them, creating great damage to this process of absorption. There are several symptoms for it, diarrhoea, indigestion and stomachache being the most common ones, and everyone reacts differently. Some celiacs have an immediate and instant reaction, some, like my brother, don't. We found out he was a celiac when he was 14, but he showed no apparent symptoms. He had a stomachache once every three months, but who doesn't? But my mum was adamant that something was wrong because he wasn't growing enough. He was within the very minimum parameters, but his body wasn't developing as much as it should have. He's been on a gluten-free diet ever since, and he's now taller than me, so that sorted the problem. Since gluten is typically associated with wheat, people assume that celiacs only have to steer clear of pasta, pizza and bread, but unfortunately that's not true, because gluten is found in a lot of other food components, such as preservatives, additives and colorants, and that rules out a much wider range of products than anyone could ever imagine. It's also connected to the production process of foods. If a food that is naturally gluten-free in itself is produced in a factory that deals with products that contain gluten, some companies may not be able to guarantee 100% that there is no cross-contamination between products, so a product that originally would be gluten-free becomes inedible to celiacs just to be on the safe side. I don't really know how England as a country deals with this situation because my brother lives in Italy, but over there, celiacs are very well looked after, I have to say. Since they need to buy gluten-free products, which include flowers other than wheat-based ones and products with no specific additives, these products are very expensive and the Italian government issues around €150 Euros a month that each celiac can spend on said foods. You can obviously buy more than that, but out of your own pocket. I don't really know any celiacs here in London, so I don't know if this kind of support is available here. Luckily, this is a great time to be a celiac in the sense that progress and science allow us to produce all sorts of foods with all sorts of other ingredients, so celiacs can still have pizza and pasta, just not with the same flour. I'll be 100% honest, it's very rare to find something gluten-free that tastes as good as its gluten-containing counterpart, but it's still better than nothing. In England, there is a wide range of very good gluten-free products in shops, and some of them are so good that you can't really tell they're missing gluten. But my experience in finding restaurants that cater for celiacs was very different from what I expected. 
Since shops are very advanced in what they offer, I expected to find a lot of restaurants and pubs that offered real and good gluten-free options, but I was very disappointed to realise that I was wrong. Basically, what I saw is that every restaurant offered very good options for meat, vegan and vegetarian menus, where in the vegetarian and vegan menus, the dishes were made on purpose, they'd been created on purpose to cater for these needs, whilst the gluten-free section was basically one or two dishes that just so happened to be gluten-free in the other menus, so they were not made on purpose, and obviously they could also have the salads that every menu included. I completely understand that vegetarianism and veganism sell more because of how mainstream they are and because of how many people follow those diets, and I understand that restaurants need to make money and capitalise on what brings them more income. But since celiac disease is becoming more and more common, and a lot of people who are not medically celiacs still follow a gluten-free diet because they feel that gluten is bad for them, I would have expected London, of all places, to offer much, much more. We ended up going to a restaurant that is 100% gluten-free, and I'm really happy we did, because every single thing that my brother saw on the menu, he could have, instead of having to pick out the one or two dishes that he can usually have. But that's not the point. I wish we hadn't had to go to a gluten-free restaurant, because I wish more general restaurants had catered better for this specific need. But I guess we're not quite there yet. Let's now have a look at a couple of words related to wheat. One piece of wheat is called ear. An ear is the grain-bearing tip of a plant, so we say an ear of wheat. Wheat is a grain. A grain is a single dry seed of crops like rice, wheat, corn, barley, and it's also the general term that refers to all crops that produce these single seeds. There wasn't a grain of truth in his story means that there wasn't even a little bit of truth in it, and a grain of sand is one little piece of sand. Grain is also the natural lines occurring in the structure of substances like wood that you would see, for example, in a wooden table. You can shave against the grain, so against the direction in which your hair grows, or you can shave with the grain. His lifestyle goes against the grain because he parties all night, sleeps all day, and then goes clubbing again. That means that he does something that is not what people would naturally, usually, and typically do. To take something with a pinch or grain of salt means that you don't fully believe what someone says because you know that they don't always tell the whole truth. So if he tells you that he is a manager now, you may want to take that with a pinch or grain of salt because you know that he inflates the truth sometimes. So maybe he's now just an assistant manager rather than a full manager. And that's it for today. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel down below. And do let me know in the comments if you are a celiac and how your country deals with the situation and if you get any kind of support and if you've had any bad experiences here in London or England related to that. In the meantime, I will see you on Thursday with my quick vocabulary video and next Tuesday with another explanation one.